All right. Who's ready to rock and roll? Maybe later then, okay? All right, I'm ready, Derek. Next! <laughs> what the hell? Hello there, fellow adventurers. So, uh, if this video looks a little better than normal, it's because my friend Derek, who's a professional cameraman, is uh, gonna be filming today. Action! So today we're gonna be talking about a game that uh, Derek actually suggested, isn't that right? That's right, Steven. If you're familiar at all with the adventure genre, you most likely know about Grim Fandango. It was released in 1998 by LucasArts, which makes this year the 20th anniversary. This is writer and director Tim Schafer in 1995, and 20 years later in 2015. He was a driving force behind other LucasArts classics such as Full Throttle. Driving force? Get it, Derek? No, I do not get it. Tim Schafer also founded Double Fine Productions, which remastered the original game in 2015. This is the version I'm playing, which has improved character sprites and dynamic lighting, as well as updated controls which I understand were rather awkward in the original. I admit this is my first time playing the game, and the reason I didn't play it before is that my friend gave me the impression that the characters were made of tofu. And I really don't like tofu. How about you, Derek? Do you like tofu? Oh, you're telling me what I would do for a chunk of soy right now, Steven. As it turns out, everyone isn't made of tofu. They're actually skeletons, and the story is set in the land of the dead. Our main protagonist is Manuel Manny Calavera, as seen here on this t-shirt. All right, you want to zoom in on that, Derek? Okay, Steven. Got it. Got it. Manny works as a travel agent for souls on their way to find eternal rest, and the means of their journey is determined by their deeds in life. It's here at the Department of Death that Manny meets the woman he's prepared to follow to the ends of the earth. Literally. This is Mercedes Meche Colomar, and she doesn't seem to have any skeletons in her closet. Did you kill much when you were alive? Very little. Never killed anybody? I have to confess, I never killed anybody. Not even a teensy bit of killing? Maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough. Work with me, Meche. Give me some dirt. Hey, Derek, did you kill much when you were alive? Nope. Never killed anybody? Uh, nope. No, not even a teensy bit of killing? Uh, no, pretty sure not, no. Work with me, Derek. Give me some dirt. I might have killed a man. Before we can set off on our journey, we must find a suitable driver. Hey, service! Hey, who the- This rambunctious creature is Glottis, appropriately named after the elongated space between the vocal cords. I am an elemental spirit summoned up from the land of the dead itself and given one purpose, one skill, one desire. I know, to be made into a plushie. To drive! Or to change oil and adjust timing belts if no driving jobs are open. This first chapter is the only time we get to visit the land of the living. I found this perspective of life through the eyes of death to be quite unnerving, though death is not without a sense of humor. Psst, it's me, death. I'll see you soon, okay? The land of the dead isn't such a gloomy place after all. I mean, for one thing, they have balloon animals. We can choose between a cat, a dingo, a dead worm, or Robert Frost? This doesn't look anything like Robert Frost. All right, so uh, let's try that out. I got some balloons here. It's one for Derek. Thanks, Steve. And uh, we're gonna see who does the best Robert Frost. Pump? I think these are pump balloons. Woo! 
Let's check in and see what our elemental spirit friend is up to. Gladys, are you loco? What got into you? That was a company car. Oh yeah, and it's even better company now. I'm in. With Glottis at the wheel, the souped up bone wagon is unstoppable, except when it encounters rugged terrain. For that, we're going to need an upgrade. Manny, until now we scraped along the ground like rats, but from now on we saw like eagles. Heh. Like eagles on pogo sticks! Well, Manny doesn't find any eagles on pogo sticks, but he does encounter some flaming beavers. Fortunately, he has a fire extinguisher handy. That's it, extinguish those beavers. Hmm, maybe that's not quite the solution. There's one part of the forest where I got totally stumped. Get it, Derek? Forest stumped? Uh, you lost me on that one, Steven. Anyway, you can drive in and out of these passageways, but don't seem to get anywhere. I thought that if you went through them in a certain order, you'd come out somewhere else. But it turns out the way onwards was right under my feet. And that's all I have to say about that. After all, this is supposed to be a spoiler-free review. Steven, are you sure you don't want to talk about the secret entrance underneath the ground? No, Derek, what did I just say? This is meant to be spoiler free. Do you want to get sprouted? Ugh, no. I don't even know what that is. Let me tell you. Well, put simply, sprouting is how those who are already dead die. It's most eloquently expressed by the leader of the Lost Souls Alliance, Salvador Limones. There's nothing more horrible than the bite of the sprouter. Its deadly stinger spreads a green disease through every calcified pore on your body, leaving you veined with roots and flocked with grass, steadily growing thicker and thicker until you crash and bloom out in a horrifying bouquet of pain and fragrant suffering, leaving you nothing but a patch of wildflowers on the ground swarming with butterflies. I love that story. Manny eventually arrives at Rubacava on the shores of the Sea of Lament and quickly lands a job at the cafe. What happens next is pure cinema. The camera slowly pulls back from Manny mopping the floor and out over the building. It then cranes up past this tower that looks like a giant spineless cactus and we fast forward to one year later when Manny's circumstances have entirely changed. Oh yeah, that's one smooth transition. One smooth transition. Manny is now owner of the Calavera Cafe and Casino, and his role is similar to that of Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. This is where the game really opens up and becomes a phantasmic playground for you to explore. The impressive art design and backgrounds, together with the jazzy orchestral soundtrack, really brings the Land of the Dead to life. One of the places you can visit is the giant cat racetrack, although it's left up to the imagination what's going on. Someone's gaining on the outside, it's vengeful bounce. Maybe it wasn't in the budget to see the cats racing. Instead, we get to take in the sights and smells of this giant kitty litter. One of the most memorable characters for me is the coroner, who has a profound sense of mortality. Death makes sad stories of us all. He's not quite as chatty as Carla the security guard. Now there was a good dog, Mr. Rufus. Mr. Rufus? He was such a sweet little puppy. We didn't care I remember that he I was had a deaf. Dog once. He was as deaf as they come, but he'd still try to bark. And it would come out so Grim Fandango is not a particularly quiet game. It's a grand epic story that doesn't throw any punches. <clears throat> At the same time though, there are many subtle details and clues that are easy to miss if you're not paying attention. Then there's other things that fool you into thinking that there's more to it. At the Blue Casket Club, for example, the owner Olivia recites a poem. In a warm, cozy bed, buried 
We wake. The flesh dream is over, Daddy. Now that we're all crazy and dead. I was sure that I had to perform the whole poem again in the correct order, but as far as I know, it's just part of death's rich tapestry. <laughs> you get that one, Derek? Steven, I'm not sure that's even a joke. In the second half of the game, things continue to twist and turn in new and exciting ways. You'll have to play the game for yourself to uncover all of its mysteries, but you can expect a wild adventure full of action, <laughs> comedy, coming home soon. What did you say, little kitty? Don't talk, kitty cat. Just run, baby. Romance. Oh, my stockings. That ruined. And vomit. <laughs> so, with all these things going for it, why isn't Grim Fandango one of my favorite adventure games? Oh, please enlighten us. Well, it's hard to explain, but I feel the same way about it as I do about Full Throttle. Well, I admit it's not the kind of adventure I usually play. It's a little different from King's Quest, Black Mirror, or Mist, for example. In any case, I appreciate its originality and boldness. I mean, how many adventure games are there about biker gangs? Let alone bikers that play the piano. Ooh, ooh, So, that's all I have to say about Grim Fandango. You got anything else, Derek? Oh, I've got something I want to say. What, you, what the hell are you doing? Get out of there. Don't listen to this British tiddlywink. Grim Fandango is an original story, a fantastic cast of characters, and a fun time. Go give it a try. It's the Mugrack at the end of the world.